and wondering whether this is the beginning of the end of strikes because teaching unions in England have begun talks with the government as strikes have been paused. Heathrow Security are uh, going to be striking for 10 days, including Easter. That's when a lot of people want to get away for holidays, of course. And the real strikes continue. We had a big real strike on Thursday. There's a tube strike in London, I think, on Wednesday as well. So the strikes continue. This kind of winter, coming into the spring now, of uh, chaos and, and, well, perhaps not chaos, perhaps organised chaos, perhaps people who have balloted for strikes and people are perfectly happy to be on strike. Have you been on strike? Is that something that you feel is uh, you're happy enough to do? Or do you feel that maybe now is the time to say, hold on a second, we've had the budget, we've had a few deals and with different uh, aspects, including those healthcare workers I was mentioning there, maybe now it's time to uh, calm things down and to get back to work, quite frankly. Um, Ewan McGaughy is with me, he is Associate Professor of uh, King's College, specialising in labour law. Hello Ewan, thank you so much for coming in. Great to be here. Uh, thank you for coming in. You look very smart. Uh, Saturday morning with the uh, usually the lectures. The lectures I remember, I must say, barely wore ties. Uh, barely, barely threw on clothes in the morning. So I, I definitely I, I appreciate that. Uh, but maybe law is a bit different to history and politics. Um, I don't know. Um, and uh, he's come from King's College, uh, London. And uh, we have Keith Prince as well. He's a, an assembly member for London. Let me talk to you, uh, for the Conservative Party. I should say, uh, you and maybe I could talk to you first. You've been on strike. Why have you been on strike? Well, it's not just about me, but it's about all the people around the country who are facing not just pay cuts this year because of inflation. Uh, and remember, inflation caused by the failure of the government to contain energy bills, the failure to have uh, a tax on the 40 billion excess profits of BP and Shell and keep the cap on the big energy companies and the polluters. Uh, that's what's driven inflation this year in real terms pay cuts this year. But it's also that since 2010, we've seen the longest real terms wage cut since the Industrial Revolution uh, for British workers. So uh, if we take nurses, uh, they are still looking at a 5% pay cut. The government is announcing, a, I think it's something like an 8.2% pay uplift, one-off, uh, but that'll still leave them uh, 1 or 2% uh, in real terms pay cuts. Uh, and, you know, clapping doesn't uh, pay the bills. Uh, we've got teachers facing a 5% real terms pay cut this year. Um, and you're right, in my own sector, university staff, uh, we've seen 30% real terms wage cuts, uh, enormous gender and race pay gaps, uh, cuts to the pension, um, and and this is all at a time when uh, the government is sitting on piles of cash. Uh, they could have been taxing the big energy company polluters. Uh, there was a windfall in the amount that was raised through taxes just before the budget. Um, and the health secretary, Steve Barclay, has said it would cost £28 billion only to make sure that all public sector workers, including border staff, by the way, would have an inflation-protected mm. pay rise. That figure actually comes down to around £10 billion when you include tax okay. receipts. So it's not like the money isn't there. Uh, and this government really needs to stop its government shutdown. So we're in a situation where people in the private sector who don't have jobs for life, who don't have a, as good a pension as people like you do, are on wage rises of something like 5.5%. That's the average that they're dealing with. So why should you get a bigger rise than people in the private sector? Well, I don't think that you should personalise it, and I don't think it's factually accurate to say that the Wages are rising private, by 5.5% uh, overall. Uh, uh, don't, I don't think it's factually accurate to say that people in the private sector uh, have worse pensions than people in the public sector, or at least the government is trying to do everything <laughs> it can to make sure that everybody has worse pensions. I mean, that's the reality. Um, and, and what we need to do is make sure that everybody in Britain has uh, a good wages. It's a universal uh, human right to uh, well, that, have that fair may, wages may, well, and take you and that may well be. Sorry, just one in, second in, in order sorry, to, uh, sorry to interrupt if, you. If I can just finish well, my you, sentence. You can't because you've said a lot. I'm just going to ask, ask you on that point. In terms of I mean, you're saying that people shouldn't be split, and I totally get that in terms of saying we, we shouldn't be pitting people against one another. But the fact is if you work in the private sector, I declare my interest, your pay conditions, pension, are not as good as people who work in the public sector. That is true. Uh, what you're ignoring, as I said at the beginning, is that we've had the longest fall in wages for British workers since the Industrial Revolution. Um, and, and you're right that there are these divisive tactics, not necessarily by you, but used by the government, uh, to pitch pit, uh, different kinds of workers off against one another. It's fundamental to understand, and this is what I was going to try and finish saying before, uh, that fair pay is a universal human right and the right to take collective action, including strike action if necessary, is a fundamental right. It's what brought down the Kaiser at the end of World War I. Uh, strike action is what 
forced the British to quit India. It was what brought an end to the Iron Curtain, and it was what brought an end to apartheid in South Africa. Strikes for fair pay and fair, uh, fairer working conditions of fairer society are at the heart of democracy. Uh, and this government, because it doesn't have any answers, is just becoming more and more militant in trying to cut down on people's right to protest and freedom of association. That's not a path we should go down. OK, Keith Prince is a Conservative. He's a London Assembly member. I'm not saying that he necessarily agrees with every single thing this government has done, but he's nonetheless a member of the same party. Um, Keith, thank you for joining us. I appreciate that. Uh, what do you make of what Ewan has said, that strikes are and collective action is something that should happen, is something that is necessary and is something that can lead to, well, as we have seen for ambulance workers and other health workers and nurses this week, uh, if they vote for it, of course, it has led to uh, better, better pay conditions and all the rest, but surely this is something that uh, should be used as a tool. What do you think, Keith? Well, I think the, uh, the fundamental thing is that your guest seems to have a bit of a memory loss when he talks about the government having money and not having money and making cuts. Because I think we need to remember that it was the Labour government that left the country absolutely bankrupt. When well, come on, it's been 13 years. It's been 13 years doesn't since the Labour matter. government. It doesn't matter. But the point is we were bankrupt and that's why we had to make those really necessary cuts in order to save the economy because it was in ruin under the previous government. And I like the point you made, actually, which was when you said about, well, uh, private sector pensions are nowhere near as good as public sector pensions. All of a sudden that was brushed aside. Oh no, we're not talking about that because they don't like to hear the truth, you see. And then when we look about fuel prices, the reason for the fuel prices was because of the Ukraine war. This government didn't start the Ukraine war. What do you, Keith, uh, what do you think about that strikes was an in general? Do, do you think and the pandemic, and the pan yeah. no, and the pandemic yeah. as well, last thing, uh, we had to spend £400 billion keeping the economy afloat mm. during the pandemic. That's all forgotten. Um, yes, I think people should have the right to strike in the right situation, but if you give me the time, I'll try and explain the solution that I've been trying to Go put for a real key for really key uh, workers, people who are working jobs that are absolutely necessary to keep the economy going, then I think we shouldn't have strikes. I think we should have what's called pendulum arbitration. Now, basically, the way pendulum arbitration works is that each side puts in their best bid to resolve the situation. You have an independent adjudicator, probably a, a judge, and that judge then decides which side has the best offer or the most fair offer, and then that becomes the award. So if the uh, bosses, if you like, put in too weak an argument, they lose. If the uh, workers put in too demanding argument, they lose. So that way we don't have strikes with key workers, but we have a very fair system that gives the people who have got the biggest argument getting the best award. Well, those who have been on strike, let me just stick with you, uh, Keith, just for one more question, then I'll come back to you. Those who have been striking, the healthcare workers, for example, they've just got a pay deal. They, they, it, it works. They've, 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 got, they've got more money. They've got better conditions. They've got a payoff. Uh, they've got a, a, a one-year payoff. They've got a, a, they, the government said that it wouldn't talk about this year uh, in terms of this financial year, and it has. It has capitulated on that. So strike, strikes work, clearly. And these strikes are working and extra, these workers, the Heathrow workers, for example, the real workers will be looking at the healthcare workers thinking, well, they've won. Why shouldn't we just continue and we'll get a deal eventually anyway? Well, I think that's a good argument. But the point is, if we had pendulum arbitration, this would have been sorted out a lot sooner because if the uh, care workers are getting uh, a fair deal then they should have got that in the first place. Uh, they would have put that in as their offer in pendulum arbitration. The judge would have said what the government off is offering is not fair, what the, care or the health workers are asking for is fair, ergo, they win the day. Ian, what do you make of everything you've heard? Oh, well, my memory is uh, impeccable, and in 2008, uh, I remember that the banks crashed the economy. Banks like Goldman Sachs, I don't know if Keith Prince is familiar with Goldman Sachs, but the people that worked at Goldman Sachs like Rishi Sunak, uh, or we've got people like Nadim Sahawi, millionaires and billionaires who don't pay their fair share of tax. Uh, and, and if we are talking about a lack of money in order to pay people fair wages, well, one thing that you could do is make sure that people like them, people in government, pay their fair share of tax. But the other thing, and, and, and this is really important, is that uh, there is uh, already the money there. 
Um, and so it, it's simply not good enough to say that, oh, well, to resolve this dispute, we should uh, make sure that nobody has the right to take collective action, uh, that everything should go to binding arbitration. What needs to happen to solve this problem right now is that the government needs to act in good faith, get round the bargaining table, uh, and make sure that they aren't cutting pay by 5% or 2% in real terms this you, year. You teach undergraduates, presumably. Uh, and masters and, and master, PhD yeah, students. Yeah, I'm sure you do teach, teach all, all the full range of students, but you do teach Teach, teach undergraduates. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, don't you feel guilty when they are, when you're withdrawing your labour and they're not getting the full education that they have paid for? They've been through the lockdowns. They've, you know, they've had a lot of education taken away from them. I'm sure you don't strike lightly, and I'm not trying to make light of it in any way. But is that not part of your decision-making process, at least? Well, Peter, you've got to imagine that there's enormous student support for uh, for the strikes in universities, as there is uh, teacher support and uh, support from all across the public for the nurses and the border staff and so on to get fair pay, because students and staff fundamentally have the same interests at heart. Student fees have been soaring since 2010. They've tripled for home students. Uh, they are up at rates of £25,000 often for international students. And students are seeing that their fees are not going into their teaching. It's not going into teacher pay. It's not going into research. Uh, and, and this is part of the wider problem of the growth in income inequality. What we need to do in the short term is get the government around the bargaining table to bargain in good faith uh, and not keep hoarding all the money for its business interests and the banking sector. Uh, and what we need to do in the long term is we really need to rebuild a good system of industrial relations with sector-wide bargaining, fair pay agreements across every sector, and crucially more voice at work so that you can vote for who's on the board of directors in your company so that we have a more collaborative a radical, industrial... radical plan. Well, 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 like a majority of wealthy countries in the OECD, there's a right to elect between something like one-third and one-half okay. of who's on the board. And, and that means that we ha don't see the level of strikes. It's a more collaborative industrial relations system. That's what we We've okay. got to do in the long term. Okay, Ian McGaughy, thank you very much indeed. He's an associate professor at King's College specialising in labour law and Keith Prince is a London Assembly member for the Conservative Party. Thank you both very much. I want to know what you think about this. Are you a student? Are you someone who is uh, perhaps striking or thinking of striking or maybe your union is striking and you don't think you should be striking or maybe you're very happy to do so. Maybe you're delighted that you've got a pay offer and you'll be voting for it because that's what your union has recommended that you do. Let us know. 0344 499 1000 will be